Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So, today, how will markets react? So far, so good. Started very negative, at least with the futures market. Now turning green, and it could be because of what Bank of England did in desperation at stabilizing their gilts and their currency, the British pound. So let's talk about it and how is this affecting Bitcoin and crypto overall? Let's take a look. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell to get notified of all my streams. Follow me on social media. Check out CryptoZeros.com and make sure you follow my other channels as well. They're all in the description, guys, if you're looking for them. Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am a little bit, a tad bit early. That's because I do need to end a bit early too. But as you can see right now, the futures market are indicating a green day. That is great because not too long ago, uh, Dow Future was at like negative 300-ish and, and uh, everything was red and now it's turning green. So that's that's good because yesterday was not good overall. Uh, right now in the U.S., there's still, of course, a lot of fear. A lot of people looking at the bond market. A lot of people looking at the DXY, right? Of course, a lot of people are looking at what's going on overseas in Europe with the U.K. and all that. So there's still a lot of stuff happening right now. It's a very, how do you call it, a fluid market. Things are changing, seems like, daily right now. So in the U.S., obviously, we have our own issues. The 10-year Treasury yield tops 4% for the first time in four years. And this is what the Treasury yield curve looks like. And it's actually the highest at three-year, which is close to 4.4%. But the thing is, when it comes to yield curves, this is, called, this is what's referred to as an inverted yield curve because you could see that the three-year interest is higher than the 10-year interest and that's not how it should be. The longer the year is actually, the more yield you're supposed to get. But because there's so much fear, short-term fear right now, and because of the strength of the dollar, everyone is flocking to the one, the two, the three, even the five-year uh, treasury notes, right? So it's all, it's all backwards right now. But you can see these are all flying high, and a 10-year yield was just above... 4%, which doesn't seem like a big deal. But right now, when it comes to bonds and notes, it is because it shows how fearful people are right now. Uh, here's an interesting fact. 44% of stocks in S&P 500 registered an oversold reading yesterday, which means this is the most oversold period since, guess when, bottom in 2020 when we had the pandemic and the mandatory shutdowns and all that. So right now, the stock market is as oversold as that period. So think about that, okay? We did have a very sharp V-shaped recovery in 2020, and that's because the governments around the world decided to step in and start printing and printing and printing and printing and start buying up all the assets they can, right? That's kind of how things went in 2020 and 2021. But now we're, we're kind of paying for those decisions, right? So stocks are as oversold. And in the U.S., of course, the housing market still getting weaker by the day. The rates jump up to 6.52 by this time next year. If the Fed does not cut rates, I mean, mortgage interest could be like 8, 9, 10% next year. Not something I'm looking forward to because you guys know I'm currently in the, house, in the process of building a house. So that's not something that I want to hear, but that's the harsh reality. And this is what Powell wants to do, crush demand, get everyone to be broke so that they can't afford to buy anything. So that's how you cut demand, right? And that's not, I don't know. Hopefully he doesn't go too overboard with that because many people are fearful that he does and really does make people really broke. And that, then we're going to have a worse off situation, right? 
Um, so that's what's happening in the U.S. But I do believe today we may be having a green day because of what U.K. is doing, or at least their bank. Right now, the Bank of England seems to be dictating things. They did declare last week, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, that they already are in recession. They're using their GDP, and they basically a technical recession is when you have two quarters two GDP quarters showing negative growth, and that's exactly what happened in the UK. That's happened in the US, but somehow the US doesn't recognize that we're in a recession. Still talking about, oh, what if we do go in a recession? We are already in, in a technical recession. So the Bank of England already recognized that, and because of that, you know, the new Prime Minister, uh, uh, Liz Truss, decided to come up with all these tax cuts and that, that wasn't very well received, right? And also the Bank of England was very dovish with their rate hike. So inflation is still high. And where where they go get all the money uh, with you know with the tax cuts, they're gonna have to borrow more, right? So that's why I've been covering UK situation is 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 uh, is not good energy prices are skyrocketing too. So today the Bank of England said, like, enough, enough is enough, because the UK bond market, which is called gilts, didn't know that until recently, uh, they are also skyrocketing, just like the US, because everyone is fearful about the markets in the UK, and not just the market, the currency, because the British pound, the sterling, has been dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping and continues to drop. It's at 106 today. Just yesterday, it was at 108. Day before was 1.9, day before 1.10. You just see the strength of the sterling decrease every single day now, right? Every single day. So what is Bank of England? What do they propose? How are they going to try to stop this? Well, just like what happened back in 2020, at least in the U.S., uh, the Fed said that they were going to buy up all these bonds, OK, they're just go buy bonds, essentially buying back treasury bonds and buying junk bonds from corporations. Basically, they're just buying everything to try to prop up the environment, right, the economy. And that's what Bank of England is going to do. They're going to buy as many long dated government bonds as needed between now and October 14. That's kind of scary because as many as needed, that could be any number it could be trillions right and i just got done talking about how many people are fearful about where to go get the money because now they're doing this you know uh tremendous amount of tax cuts so where to go get the money to buy all these long data government bonds does that mean they're gonna have to print more money right where's the money coming from so is it gonna lead to more inflation maybe and then also just like the u.s fed their Bank of, uh, Bank of England said they were going to sell off their assets, sell off what they hold, um, but they're going to stop doing that. They're going to stop doing that because of what's happening. So this is their way to kind of stabilize the market, to basically buy more bonds and not sell off anything that they have. So they're becoming a bigger, bigger asset manager. <laughs> essentially, right? Uh, but questions, where is the money coming from? And uh, and is this enough? And where is the money coming from? Yeah, I mean, that's I think that's what everyone's worried about, right? Where is the money coming from? So, uh, but because of this news, it could be the reason why things are looking better today, that, that it seems like UK is taking things more seriously. Of course, uh, they're not the only bank that's having problems. I mentioned U.S. has their own problems. Bank of Japan is having major problems too. Bank of Japan now recognizing that inflation is going to be higher than a two percent target. I don't know what the actual I don't know what the actual inflation rate is in Japan, but it's probably similar to U.S. and Europe, probably around nine ten percent. But the Bank of Japan is still keeping their rates low at negative interest. They didn't even have any rate hikes. And uh, their bond market is absolutely collapsing. The Japanese yen is absolutely collapsing. And recently, they had an emergency session try to curb that, too, by selling off dollars to buy yen. 
to try to decrease the amount of yen that's out there. You know who else tried this? You know, you know what that sounds like? It sounds like Luna because that's what exactly what they did. <laughs> when when UST was collapsing, you know what they did? They sold off billions upon billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin to buy UST. And they thought that by buying UST, it was going to stop people from selling it and dumping it. And we know how that ended. So hopefully that's not how Japan is going to end, right? But whenever you do sell off a ton, in this case dollar, which is so damn strong right now, to buy something that is really weak and getting weaker, I don't know if that's actually going to solve things, right? But if you look at what's happening right now, it's exactly what Luna tried to do, and it failed miserably. Um, and that is why the DXY... The strength of the dollar continues to go higher and higher and higher and higher. So, yeah, that's what's happening right now. But you know what? Like I've been saying, like I've been saying for a long time, right? This is why we need Bitcoin. This is why more and more people are paying attention to Bitcoin because all the shenanigans that's happening around the world with all these central bankers, with all these governments, that seem to really, really struggle right now because they don't know what to do. I think the biggest problem right now is, if you think about it, 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 yes, inflation is an issue, and everyone is trying to deal with inflation due to what happened in 2020. But all these countries right now are really struggling with the fact that their currencies are are getting decimated. The currencies around the world, and we're talking about major currencies like the euro, the pound, the yen, the Swiss franc, uh, and whatever, the Canadian dollar, and all these other currencies, they are being debased, and they are losing their strength against the dollar in a major way, not just in a small way. We're talking about 20 to 30% within a matter of months, and they continue to go down. That is what all these countries are facing with. Like They don't know how to stabilize their currency. They really don't. And the U.S. is lucky that the U.S. dollar is so strong and everyone is still buying up dollars because if they weren't, we would be in the same situation as everyone else. And that's not a good situation to be in. Right. But honestly, what do we need? We need something better. We need Bitcoin. Right. That is why I'm so bullish on Bitcoin long term. Bitcoin right now is proving itself that it's absolutely essential for people to get away from traditional money, traditional financial systems, and take control of something that can't be inflated artificially, can't be uh, eased or tightened through quantitative easing and tightening, and can't be controlled by anyone, right? This is what we need. And Mike Novogratz, who is a big Bitcoin bull, believes that the next bull run that we'll have, which probably will be in 2024, Maybe it starts in the latter half of 2023, but probably 2024. Well, it's not just about price going up. It's also going to be about utility. He believes that half of it will be spurred by utility, by people coming into the space and utilizing what exists, right? Like the dApps that's being built right now and so forth. And I think that's true. I mean, more and more dApps are coming into the space we're having a lot of innovation some of them may not do so well right now they may fail but ultimately we're we're at we're at the early stages and we're building right that's that's what's important and one of the reasons why all coins have stood so strong against bitcoin is because of those innovations because back in 2017 and prior cycles whenever we had long corrections like this guess what BTC dominance goes up, everything else goes down because there were no utility out there back then. But now it's it's different. But there will be more. And even with Bitcoin, it's not just all coins, it's Bitcoin because let's not forget Lightning Network is blooming right now, right? So Bitcoin beyond store value, beyond hedge against inflation, you could use it as a payment system, as a payment rail. Right. And that is what Jack Mueller is trying to do with Strike. In fact, he has already done it. You can use Strike to to receive and send payments utilizing the Lightning Network. Also, merchants can use this to accept payments 
basically virtually free and they just received 80 million dollars to continue forward and expanding and they're becoming big real legit and the lightning capacity you can see in blue continue to skyrocket despite the fact that the price has not been skyrocketing but you could see the lightning network capacity continues to go upwards. So this is what Mike Novogratz means by utility. This is just one example of it. There's so much more that we haven't even thought of yet that will be coming in the next few years, next five to 10 years, right? But that's why we're in it. We're in it because we believe it's early and it's gonna make a lot of people a boatload of money and attain financial freedom, right? So. This is why you don't want to give up. You don't want to give up. All right. Lastly, what else is there? Hey, we got three minutes before Market Bell. I'm really early because usually I'm streaming right at Market Bell. Uh, the manhunt for uh, the most wanted man in crypto, Do Kwan, continues. South Korea is seeking to freeze the $62 million leaked to Do Kwan recently. It seems like someone sent about 3,000 plus bitcoins to a couple exchanges kucoin and okx and south korea authorities are telling both exchanges to stop it because most likely it's from do kwan someone who claims he's not on the run all of a sudden decided to cash out 62 million dollars when uh his arrest warrant was was uh was known um so yeah i, I do think someone is pretty desperate at this point trying to cash out and trying to get the hell out of wherever he is. So we will see. He will be caught someday. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday. Uh, Crypto.com ticks off France. So Crypto.com as an exchange is still growing in many, many different jurisdictions. So that's good. And also there's another platform, Audius, which continues to thrive. When I covered them before, they were having around three to four million monthly users. Now they hit 7.5 million monthly users. So in case you don't know, Audius is like a streaming platform, like a decentralized Spotify. And um, they've been operating for, for many years, but people don't even realize it's a decentralized platform. So that's the beauty. They already have the users. You go get involved with NFTs. And they're trying to get more involved with the uh, with creators and uh, musicians and trying to get them to be more compensated. So there you go. There you go. They're, do they're still doing very, very well. All right, guys. That is pretty much it overall. Did the bell ring already? No. The market is looking like it's going to turn green. Bitcoin. Is coming up a little bit, 19,100. And overall market is doing good. A little bit good. All right, let's do some Q&A. Sorry, I had to take that. <laughs> had to. All right, uh, I gotta. We gotta do a quick Q and A. I gotta. I gotta take off in five minutes, but I am curious to see the market bell just wrong. I'm curious to see how the market opens. I think it's looking like. I think it's looking like it's going to open green, and it will probably be green today. So that is going to be good. Why the dump last night? You know what? I don't know. Probably whale manipulation. What else can it be? It's always whale manipulation. Whenever we have fake outs, who caused them? Whales. Whales, whales, whales. Um, all right. Jason says, great video on drivers only. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, trying to trying to still spur up that that uh that channel as much as I can. Car market absolutely sucks. No one wants to overpay for cars. No one wants to really buy a car right now. 
But, uh, you know, I'm going to still keep going at it. The market will come back. Um, thesis himself says, uh, permable gang, uh, 75 was bottom. Well, we haven't hit it already. So, uh, I mean, hit it again, I should say, uh, what are your thoughts on Marlin? I'm not so sold on them. I, at one point in time, I thought maybe they would have potential as a layer zero, they call it layer zero, but I don't see their their use anymore. All the layer ones already do what they do, basically, which is scale. So, over a third. Nick says over a third of UK businesses have given up exporting to Europe completely. You know, the thing about what's going on with currencies. It's going to get very, very expensive for Europe to ship to or export to the U, uh, U.S. now, right? Because think about the, U, the dollar so strong and the pound is so so weak now, right? Uh, so you're probably going to see a lot more exports of U.S. goods. I mean, a lot more imports of U.K. and uh, European goods into the U.S., Right, but a lot less importing into the UK and Europe from the US. So that I think I got that right. So last time I checked, um, there was a lot of pharmaceutical stuff coming from Europe, a lot of alcohol coming from Europe, a lot of automotive uh, parts and cars from Europe. Those will probably increase in the US, but vice versa, going to Europe and UK, I don't, I don't know. It's going to be very little because of how strong the dollar is. Is there no hope for NFT space? There is hope. There is hope. NFTs will come back. There's no doubt about it. But right now, with everyone really struggling, no one wants to buy NFTs. But I think NFTs is not going to go away. DXY, did it go up even more? I was, it was at 114. It, okay, it's still at 114. Uh, DXY... Yeah, you got it got a little volatility here. You can see a little bit of little bounces here or there, but overall still at one fourteen, very 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 high. This will kill the U.S. industry. It will. Uh, you know, when it comes to currencies, you don't want your currency to be too strong. If it gets too strong, it kills your exports because no one wants to buy your stuff. So, whatever companies in the U.S. that ships a lot overseas, they are going to get decimated. Their Q3, Q4 numbers will absolutely be horrible. So if you're a stock trader, you want to look up companies that you hold that do a lot of exporting overseas and get out of them because they will, they will when they report, it's going to be horrible for them because no one's going to be buying right now. But, but on the flip side, it may help the U.S. supply chain issues because as things get cheaper overseas, we can buy more of it. So supply chain issues in the U.S. can be better um, as long as we have people offloading their cargo ships. Um, thanks for morning streams, work from home, watch every day. Nate, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching every day. If the whales always manipulate the market, does that mean the market will never go up? No, Kessie. If that's the case, then Bitcoin will still be at $3,000 or $1,000 or $300. Now, when there's weakness, when there's fear, it's easy to do. But when the market is strong, it's not so easy to do. So every cycle, Bitcoin forms a new high. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Tim says, wife thinks I'm downstairs working. Actually, just watching. Tim, as long as you're learning and you're getting something from the stream, then you can consider it working no you consider an educational uh lesson 
and that's a positive. As long as you're 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 learning something, and hopefully you are, um, then it's a win. Is this a pump and dump scheme? Yeah, if you're if you're talking about the euro, the pound, or the dollar, yeah. Um, I don't know if that's what you're referring to. How high are the ceilings in a new basement going to be? About 10 feet. Like 9 feet, 10 inches, something like that. More Cardano news. There's no... There's. What else do you want to hear about Cardano? They just had one of their biggest upgrades ever. And uh, it was a non-eventful upgrade. <laughs> it's just about building right now. Uh, getting more dap makers to come aboard. So it's really, really what it's about. When there's 15 million people who own one Bitcoin won't sell, the price will explode. I mean, that's that's exactly right. Last time I had the metric up, there was only 980,000, I think, addresses that hold at least one Bitcoin. You think about that, that's, that's less than a million. And you know it's not one million people holding one Bitcoin. It's because many people have multiple addresses. Like me, I probably have like five or six addresses that hold at least one Bitcoin. So, you know, you divide that 900,000 by at least half or a third or a fourth. Very little people in the world own one Bitcoin. But when they do truly all want one Bitcoin, at that point, Bitcoin would be like 600000 or a million dollars each. That's why it's still early. It's still cheap compared to where it will be in the future. George Saylor, you need to watch my other channel. Then you'll get updates. <laughs> All right, guys. I got I to gotta let you go. Overall... Hey, ah, oh, shoot. Unfortunately, uh, Dow just turned negative again. It was looking like it was going to be a good day. It was looking like maybe people were reacting well to Bank of England and their desperation at, at saving the, their guilt and, and their currency. But we'll see. We'll see how the rest of the day brings. Um, overall, a lot of fear. Of course, I've been saying that for a long time. A lot of uncertainty. But... More and more people are paying attention to Bitcoin. So don't give up on it. All right, guys. Wouldn't Lightning Network be vulnerable to regulations since off-chain transactions? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. That's a good That's a good question. Um, we'll talk about that later. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Smash up the like. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys tonight, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? Have a good one, guys, and be on the lookout for Do Kwan. Take care. Bye-bye.